Okay, next up on the agenda is a uh, review of the statement of understanding between uh, NACHGR and NHGRI. So the statement of understanding, or I may slip and call it the SOU, is a very simple document <clears throat> that outlines how um, the council and NHGRI will conduct the council business. At every February meeting of the council, we review the statement of understanding because that's time for when the new council members will begin their service. Uh, it's uh, the, the document is, I'm gonna review it. We have not made any changes to the statement of understanding. Actually, we haven't made any changes since 2020. If there were changes, I would outline and highlight those changes to the council. Uh, I'm happy to take questions at, after my presentation is completed. And I will be assisted by several other people on, on, on the staff, most but notably Deanna Ingersoll, our Chief Grants Administrative Officer. So um, let's begin. Um, all applications that have been peer reviewed are required to undergo a second level of review and we call that the, the council level review. Now, there are certain types of applications such as fellowships, contracts, and interagency agreements that are exempt from this council review process. Now, council review could be uh, an in-depth conversation about a particular application or group of applications. But when we talk about presenting applications to the council, the minimum de definition of presentation is that it appears on the closed session agenda. Now, we're required to present to you certain types of applications. So this includes large applications such as program projects, all cooperative agreement ap applications, irrespective of the act particular activity code, institutional training applications, T32s, applications that were deferred from a previous round, applications with human subjects or animal concerns that were identified during the peer review process, applications from foreign institutions and applications that are designated for special counsel review. We would also present to you any application that you requested be discussed. Uh, for the applications that are not listed on the closed session agenda, <clears throat> um, the, they will be reviewed by council in what's called the on block vote. And what that on block vote really means is that our our um, de facto stance is that every application has received a fair and appropriate review. And we're asking you to concur with the IRG for those applications that reside in the on block. There are four actions that council may take during the review of applications. You may concur with the IRG. You may defer an application for re-review due to inadequate or flawed review. And that is your assessment. You may recommend an application for high program priority or low program priority, or you may defer an application because additional you feel additional information is required for the council to conduct the second level review. Any questions so far? Okay. Um, there, count, uh, NHGRI has the authority to conduct expedited council concurrence, or actually council is, is performing expedited council concurrence, or ECC, on specific types of applications. Examples include SBIR and STTR, the so-called small business applications, and unsolicited applications submitted to the LC research program. Now, let me point out that LC and small business represent set-asides of funds. So we're required to spend a certain, a minimum of a certain percentage on those types of applications. And so we cannot reprogram that money for other purposes. So there's little need for council debate or discussion about those. Besides uh, SBIR and STTR, there are other types of applications that go through uh, expedited council concurrence. And these include career development applications such as K99, R00, and KL1 applications. Also R25 applications, education applications, 
and small research applications like R03s and R21s that have small budgets and usually are limited to two years of support. Now, why do we use Expedited Council Concurrence, ECC? It allows us to spread our workload out. Uh, the ECC subcommittee, which I'll get to in a second, actually makes their judgment about a month before council. And that allows the grants administration staff to start working up these applications for awards. Otherwise, the, the grants administration staff sits and waits to be deluged three times a year after immediately following a council meeting. So it's really designed to spread workload. As I mentioned before, there is an ECC subcommittee. The current members are Steve Rich, Lisa Parker, and Len Panaccio. And they receive a list of applications about four to five weeks before council. They review them and give their concurrence. Those applications are listed and appear in the electronic council book. So you can see what is on the ECC and what has already been approved. Questions about ECC? All right, staff authorities. This sec section of the statement of understanding uh, describes the authorities that uh, basically address what, what the staff can do without uh, council ap approval in the, with regard to supplements to existing grants. So administrative supplements will only be made to existing grants if the work proposed is within the scope of the original application and the applications that have been previously reviewed and approved by the council. The extensions can be made for one year, for only one year, and can be made at the level of the council approved level of support. Uh, all supplement requests from applicants will be reviewed by the extramural leadership team, which includes Eric, the four division directors, the acting deputy director, and me. We will continue our practice to provide council with a list of the awards each council round. Again, you can find that in the electronic council book. Now, there are some special categories of supplement awards that staff can make. These include to respond to NIH-wide initiatives in the NHGR action plan, such as those that are designed to increase the number of women, underrepresented minorities, and individuals with disabilities that are pursuing a career in biomedical research. There's the trans-NIH research supplements to promote diversity in health-related research and to promote re-entry into the biomedical and behavioral workforce. And there is the Medical Scientist Training Program, MSTP. Now, the last clause in the Statement of Understanding allows us to convene the council by virtual or electronic means in the event of a government declared state of emergency or like an act of nature. And prior to 2020, I used to make jokes about this clause, but it is no longer funny in our current pandemic state. Uh, I mentioned this before, but I'll say it again. There have been no changes to the SOU since 2020, so I'm not discussing any particular change. Any question about the statement of understanding? All right, can I get a motion to approve the, the SOU? And a second. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Anyone wish to abstain? Okay, thank you very much.